Do you have a budget? Are you perhaps frightened about making a budget? Well, it's not all that complicated to make a budget. And here to talk with me about that is Haley Tulitsky from Cook Capital. Haley, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here again. Happy to have you. You recently wrote an article about this very topic for Retirement Daily, and we're eager to have you walk us through it. Absolutely. So as you mentioned, this month's article is all about the beloved budget. Now, budget is a scary word for some. Others think that they don't need one or they just don't have the time to create one. But a budget is really important because you can't plan for the future without understanding your current financial situation. And the budget is an important foundation of every single financial plan. So this article is going to walk you through several different budgeting strategies and how to make the most out of each strategy. I want you to keep in mind that a budget can be adjusted at any time and it can be very flexible. So if you try a strategy and you don't like it or it's just not a good fit for you, don't get discouraged, try another solution because it's different for everyone and there is a best fit for you. All right, so- Now to get started one, with a budget. No, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no, how to get started? Yep, how to get started. So when you're starting your budget, you wanna first take a look at your income. So that's looking at any take home pay that you're bringing in monthly. And from there, we're gonna look at your expenses. So you split your expenses into two categories. First are your essential expenses. So this includes your rent or mortgage payment, any monthly bills that you may have, um, groceries and minimum debt payments. And then after that, you wanna look at your non-essential expenses. So these are any expenses that you could live without for a few months. That may include shopping, although some of you might consider that as essential, um, vacations, although you probably weren't taking many of those over the past few years, dining out, and any entertainment expenses. And from there, if you have any money left over, you can set some savings goals. So that might start out with building your emergency fund. If you already have three to six months of living expenses in an emergency fund, you may wanna make extra payments towards your debt, whether it's student loans, uh, credit card debt, or your mortgage. And if you're comfortable with both of those, then we can start or continue investing for retirement, whether it's through your workplace retirement plan or an individual IRA or Roth IRA. So you have several approaches that you're fond of uh, uh, suggesting. Uh, do you wanna start with the first one? Yeah, absolutely. So the first style is the 50, 30, 20. So we wanna break down your expenses and keep in mind, you might change your percentages um, after time. It's not set in stone, so be flexible about that. But you wanna spend 50% of your take home pay on your needs, so that would be those essential expenses, 30% on your wants, so that would be the non-essential expenses, and then 20% towards your saving goals. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned savings goals. I guess we can get to this in a second, but the other strategy is the spending first strategy. Yep. So that's um, spending anything that you need to first towards your essential expenses and then just saving any money you have left over. So um, you got to be comfortable that you will have some money left over. But, you know, you it, again, it's different for everyone. So try a few strategies and see what works best for you. Right. Uh, the last strategy is, I think, one of the ones that I'm most fond of, the pay yourself first strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So that's prioritizing your savings first. Um, I think this is a really great place to start. So that's prioritizing your emergency fund, those minimum debt payments, any essential expenses. And then if you have money left over, you can spend that freely how you need to, whether it's, you know, um, entertainment or spending time with friends and family. Right. So I grew up uh, in the pre-computer age and the strategy that we <laughs> were taught was the envelope system. Uh, talk about that. Yes. Yeah. So if you're old school, feel free to give this strategy a try. Um, so that's taking out from the bank any cash for any expenses that you may have. You allocate that to different envelopes based on your expenses. Um, and that's pretty straightforward, but keep in mind some bills nowadays you have to pay online. You can't pay with cash. So keep that in mind when you're doing that strategy. Right. So in the world of corporate America, uh, people are used to doing zero based budgeting. You also recommend that as one of the strategies for budgeting for your household. Talk about that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so this is a strategy that I actually use personally because I'm very structured and this just means giving every dollar that you bring home a purpose in your budget. So 
if you're very type A and very structured, you may love this budgeting style. If not, it might not be a good fit for you, but you're putting every dollar that comes home and giving it a job, whether that's allocating it towards each expense or your savings goals. Um, but at the end of the month, you should have zero dollars left over because every dollar was allocated. Right. So uh, again, I mentioned I grew up in the pre-computer age. We didn't have the tools that exist today. Uh, talk a little bit about some of these tools that people can use to make budgeting uh, simpler and less painful. Absolutely. Yeah. So you don't have to just use a spreadsheet or, you know, write down your expenses and income nowadays. If you're more comfortable with that, feel free to do so. But there are a lot of really great budgeting apps out there. Um, some examples include Mint, You Need a Budget, Pocket Guard. I mean, there are a lot of great options. So do your research. But a budgeting app is great because it does all of the work pretty much for you. So you can connect your bank accounts, you can connect your investment accounts, any loan accounts that you have, and those numbers are updated every single day. So it gives you your financial picture in real time, which is really great, and it tracks your net worth over a period of time. Right. And so from there, you can see the different um, savings and spending trends that you have. Maybe you've been spending too much in a specific category. And then the app can help you develop structured goals and help you stay on track to achieve them. Right. Anything that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to mention before we wrap up? No, I think just the important part is to get started and just remember to be flexible with yourself. Um, there isn't a one best fit for all. So just keep pushing through, trying different strategies, and you will find the best fit for you. All right. Haley, as always, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom about this topic. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Yeah, you're very welcome.